Oh, well, I was actually very impressed by it. I wasn't quite sure what it was going to be like, but yes, it, it, I was not only entertained, but I was very stimulated to go and read more about Daisy Bates. Daisy yeah. Bates, yeah, and Robina Beard was bringing her to life. That's right, yes. Um, it's actually, it was a double bill at the Holden Street Theatre. Yeah. Um, it was followed by Angels Over Kangarilla, which is a video about the work of artist and printmaker Janet Ayliss, and both of these pieces were produced by Geoffrey Sykes, who's a New South Wales-based writer and also a video producer. So, would you like me to tell you all about it? I really would like to know. OK, well, Tales of Kabali is a study of the character of Daisy Bates, superbly performed by Rabina Beard. Most of us know about this extraordinary woman, although I was surprised when my son, who's studying anthropology, said he'd never heard of her. But then her work in anthropology is only beginning to be taken seriously. She's most famous for her eccentricity. She spent the best part of 50 years camped out alone in the desert, at first in order to study the dwindling tribes of indigenous people and then actively helping them. But even more notorious is her marriage to Breaker Morant, which was never annulled, even though they soon separated. So when she married John Bates, she was knowingly committing bigamy. Mm -hmm. Very few of us have read her writings, and it's for her unique voice that Sykes has attempted to bring out in this play, rather than the extraordinary behaviour that made her famous. The Irish lilt in Robin Beard's delivery is not overdone, but it enhances the storytelling that Daisy is obviously so good at and her graceful hand and body movements vividly illustrate the tales she relates. She describes some of the native people she's known with deep affection and recounts their myths with as much assurance as if they were her own folk tales. There's bitterness as well as joy in her recollections as she speaks of the closing of the bore at Aldia when the water was contaminated. And she's able to make us feel the anguish of the Dreamtime Serpent who has to leave the place, taking its spirit with him. <clears throat> the set of this play is effective because of its simplicity, but the words are complex and deserve a second hearing. Sykes has cut the script down substantially from his original version in order to intensify the intimacy of the performance, and I think this was probably a wise move. We were entertained and never exhausted by Daisy's words. So that's what I thought of the first part of the performance. And, in fact, I was expecting to find Daisy Bates a less appealing character than the one that Sykes and Beard present. Mm. She must have appeared imperious and downright irritating to many people. <laughs> I think she did. Yeah. But in this play, she actually makes peace with herself and has no regrets, except for the love that she was unable to give to her son. Her real love is for this country and the people to whom it truly belongs. And through them, she herself has found a real sense of belonging.